Welcome to the Barrels Fit Podcast, where we help you to explore your capacity to move better, push further, and achieve your limitless potential through fitness, nutrition, recovery, and lifestyle. Hey guys, welcome back to the Barrels Fit Podcast. Uh, just me and Brandon on this one today. How are you doing, bud? I want to say I'm honest, doing good, but... <laughs> I, I was having this conversation this morning with, uh, with Elena, um, uh, my front office manager, and like a lot of people come in and they say like, how you doing? And it's kind of like, you know, do I answer honestly? And it's like, yeah, I'm doing great. Or do you just, you know what, I'm just I'm not great. Like, I just, I don't know what to say. It's just like, it's almost like you stop asking a question, how you doing? It's just like, morning, morning, and you just get on with it. Because it's like, none of us want to answer. Um, me, me and Brandon were just talking about this. Like, I think in California right now, a lot of us just feel like we're in this perpetual groundhog day where nothing seems to move forward. Um, and we see like other states and other places in the world seems like be getting back to some kind of normalcy. Yeah. Um, but, but California seems to be in LA in particular, just seems to be in this like constant state of just perpetual groundhog day. If nothing, nothing changes, nothing moves forward. In fact, the news almost gets worse. And it's like, I mean, I was reading this morning, like Fauci saying, we, we, we can't start getting back to normal till, till there's 85% vaccination you know, across the across the board. And you know, then the statistic below is like, well, there's 2% vaccinated so far, 2%. And I think California has the worst vaccination rate. So disheartening. US. It's just so disheartening. Yeah, I, I feel the same exact way. It's like all the things that I loved doing before had a community base behind it. You go to a, a concert or a show, or you just have a drink with people in the evening i mean you can right. still go do those things it's not like no one's saying you can't but like there's just like so much missing from there's that so just, much missing like yeah. you said to wake up just to wake up during the morning now it's like i really got to get some stuff going or moving yeah or else the it's will is hard. lacking and um you know and, and i have so much to be grateful for and a lot a lot of us do but that doesn't stop the stop this like overwhelming feeling of oh my god like when is this gonna shift um, I, th- I think like a lot of us thought like the election would happen and then there'd be a shift and maybe there was for a day, but then it's like, you know, a couple of weeks later and you're just like, oh my God, like we are still just doing the same thing. And it's hard, uh, you know, as a, as a, you know, as the owner of a small business and uh, like as an entrepreneur, whatever that means, um, it's hard to be entrepreneurial because you feel like you can't grow. I mean, we've been in survival mode for, you know, a year, um, you know, and it's, it's just hard to be in that 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 mindset of okay, what what do we do next to survive? What do we do next? Rather, rather than thinking, what do we do next to kind of like grow and move on to the next phase of our business development? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's more like okay, what do we do next to try and survive? Like you're just like constantly grasping for like. Yeah, startup and small business life is already very cutthroat. It's kind of yeah. like you you're always on like, am I going to have this next month? If I don't have right. this next month. Now you're trying to scale, like, where do you get those pieces to go? So everything is always just, you have to think three, four, five steps ahead. And then now when everyone's life's like that and you're like that heightened, like by 20, it's just like, I'm ready for this to be over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hard for like, it, it was hard in LA and California before this whole thing. Yeah. Right? It's just starting a business here is very, very hard. There's a lot of taxes. There's a lot of like city stuff that red you have tape. to try and get done. A lot of red tape. They make it really, really hard. And now add to that this giant, huge mess. It's just it's just brutal. Um, but we're gonna try not to get down on you guys. We're gonna try and uh, pick it up and give you something, uh, give us something fun to talk about and think about. And um, when I was thinking about this podcast, I was kind of thinking about one of my favorite films, um, which is High Fidelity, John, Cus- John Cusack. Have you seen that film? High Fidelity, no, I can't. It's a great book. I forget who wrote the book, but it's a great book and then um, I, th- I think it was the late 90s the film came out and um, basically in the film John Cusack it, it's a very musical film it's basically set to a great soundtrack um, and he's basically going through his all-time top five uh, breakups like his, his all-time top five breakups and every breakup is tied to like music or an album or like a timeline uh, of, of chronological movement uh, of uh, chronological music so he can like relate every relationship to a, a certain album or a certain song or so you kind of have this wonderful mix of relationships and music and you know tying those things together 
Um, and by the way, there's an amazing, um, uh, amazing scene um, where there's a um, where where he has like a it's like a daydream basically, and 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 he's trying to like he's making the decision to 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 do this thing with his full time top five girlfriends, and he like has this like um, duologue with Springsteen in his head, and Springsteen comes in <laughs> and does a little cameo. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of talks back to him and it's 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 the best um anyway so that's that's a great film and i love that film and then it just started thinking me making me think about like okay what are my all-time top five favorite training protocols for for strength and hypertrophy because you know at ferris athletic club we often or we always basically do three-week cycles i've done four-week cycles before i've done like five week cycles you know not that often but we've done them before in the past um, and we kind of settled on this three week, week cycle for for the reason that it's we find it to be the most successful and the most um the most effective the most interesting the most diverse kind of protocol for us and um, but within those three week cycles i use all these different protocols from from different um mm. different things i've learned over the years so today i wanted to kind of like go over what my top five are um, now, I could have chosen a number of different ones and I probably could have done really a top 10, but I thought I'll just choose five. I want to talk about what they are. I want to talk about who they're for and I want to talk about kind of why I like them. And then if you have any questions, Brandon, about these these protocols, um, you can fire away and we can have a cool conversation. Absolutely, about it. let's go. But th th there's a number of reasons why like all, all of these these workouts, um, these protocols, uh, I like them. Um, of course, they are, I find them all all very effective, uh, but the, the, there's, there, are, there are intrinsic reasons why I think um, they are great, not just for Ferris Athletic Club. Um, a lot of you guys are training in different types of gyms. Uh, obviously, a lot, of, a lot of people that listen aren't actually at Ferris Athletic Club. You can be you know, anywhere. So these, these are workouts and these are protocols that you can basically use in any gym, you know, with or without a coach. Um, things that you can, uh, once you've listened to this podcast, if something sounds interesting to you, you can just look it up. And, and figure out the protocol and use it in your gym. A lot of these are great for like um, traveling or sometimes when I'm away from the club uh, and I'm just in a gym and I think, well, what shall I do today? Like I'll just throw one of these like protocols in because they're just like fun workouts that you can always kind of turn turn back to and, uh, and kind of go from there. Um, so I want to start with number one uh, and I've been doing this a lot lately. Um, if you're doing the High Performance Hope Trophy program, um, I use a lot of this, this what's called the Y3T protocol by Neil Hill. Um, uh, I've used it a number of times over the year, but I've really been getting into it um, in these past couple of years. And I think the reason I've been getting into it in the past couple of years is A, because it makes a ton of sense. It's very, very effective. But B, I, I find it um, psychologically very doable for me. Mm -hmm. um, and what I mean by that is, I think for the longest time, you know, when you're when you're talking about functional training and, and um, having a good level of GPP, general physical preparedness, I think for the longest time I had to kind of like, I felt like I almost had to mentally push myself to a, a horrible place all the time. Yeah, like guilty. Really, really like, okay, if it, if it doesn't make me feel terrible, it was not effective. <laughs> um, and after a while, you're kind of like, well, you know, my goals really are to be, you know, stay as anabolic as possible um to to not break down as, as i get older and um, i want to keep as much lean muscle tissue as i can but i i want to do it in a way that that makes scientific sense and has a lot of uh credit credibility behind it um and uh, it's well organized it's well well set out so i found i found this this y3t protocol to be very you know very engaging uh, like i said makes a ton of sense and and i found it to be very very effective for myself and for my clients now, essentially what it is, is a, it's a progression of, of sets and rep schemes. So let's say, for example, week one, it, you'll have like a classic bodybuilding type split. So okay. you may be doing chest one day, you may be doing back another day, you may be doing shoulders another day, legs another day, arms another day, whatever it is. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to start off um, with a, a heavier weight, uh, with a lower rep scheme and a slower tempo. So let's say you might do um, six to eight reps or six to 10 reps with a four zero one zero tempo with a four second eccentric contraction. 
um, and you may do four sets, let's say, um, and you're gonna you're gonna for the first week on all your body splits kind of work with that protocol. So relatively low in the hypertrophy rep scheme, relatively slow on the tempo, mm -hmm. um, and the volume with the four sets per exercise relatively relatively high, and um, relatively high uh, set volume. Um, again you're probably gonna choose maybe four to six exercises per muscle group, um, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, you're gonna start off with your sort of classic compound movements and then probably move to some isolation movements later on. So of course, compound multi-joint movements, isolation, single joint movements. Um, and you get a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of things covered in the session. Um, week two, you move on from that rep scheme to a slightly higher rep scheme uh, and the, the weight actually comes down uh, because I've increased the reps, obviously. Mm. So the reps will come down and the tempo will quicken slightly to compensate for the higher reps. So let's say week two, I move on to three second eccentrics. So now I have three second eccentrics. I have a slightly higher rep scheme and you know, set wise is going to be kind of the same, uh, the, the, the three to four uh, kind of sets per exercise, uh, four to six exercises still, that kind of thing. Um, and again, the same kind of protocol of like compound to start and then moving on to isolation. And um, again, very, very uh, effective. Obviously, the, the, the higher the rep scheme gets, the, the more the lactic acid kind of builds. Um, and, you know, you feel like a different uh, sensation. Now, of course, what we're really trying to do here is activate different muscle fiber types. So the lower the reps, when the heavy, the weight is heavier, we're of course activating faster twitch muscles, mm -hmm. um, my kind of my power muscles, my, my my power fibers. And then as the the weight kind of gets lighter and the reps get heavier, we're going more into to type two A and type two B uh, fibers. So slower twitch fibers as we increase the reps. Now week three, we take that a step further. The reps get even higher. Mm -hmm kind of like 18 to 22 kind of rep wow. range um and adding in some yeah and and adding in uh, drop sets as well so you may do like 20 reps at a certain weight drop the pin go again drop the pin go again so it can be a lot of reps per set um again it's not so much that the the movements change um uh, as just the, the, the reps obviously get a little higher the, the lactic acid gets a, a lot more and of course we're activating now the endurance uh, muscle fiber types mm -hmm. as opposed to the power. So you're really working that muscle through through the course of the three weeks through all its different fiber types and really maximizing uh, maximizing the whole the potential of the whole muscle. Now um, this works particularly well if you have a um, access to like a, a bodybuilding type gym or a globo gym or Faros of course we have the base um with uh, with some machines um and the reason being for that like a lot of this stuff works better um with with machines um and particularly for a lot of the movements um that get that could get tough on on the lower back um let's for example say like we're doing deadlifts well you don't really want to do drop sets on deadlifts 20 reps 20 reps 20 reps right because that's going to be torture on your lower back yeah. So you're going to select a probably a a, a less um, a less uh, what's the word uh, demanding exercise for the back um, than a deadlift. Um, so maybe you're doing a lat pull down or you're doing um, a machine row or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I find that is going to give someone more. Um, you know, you're going to get a lot more out of it with a lot less risk than doing like like I said like a ton of volume on, on deadlifts per, per se. So it works really, really well in like a, like a global type gym or a, a, a gym that has a lot of machines. Um, obviously you, you can do this stuff with, uh, uh, with dumbbells and being very careful about the exercises that you choose. Um, but you do have to be a little bit careful with it um, in terms of exercise selection because it, you know, it, it could get very, very, very ugly, very, very quickly if you. No, if you absolutely. I mean, anytime I do volume on deadlifts and it's just, yeah, lower back just out of commission the next day. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we tend to stick to, to, to low reps on deadlift for, for, for that reason. Uh, we rarely go, you know, we really go, rarely go higher than, than 10 reps on deadlifts. 
Um, so yeah, just be just be careful about exercise selection. But uh, Y three T um, by Neil Hill, uh, bodybuilding protocol. Um, as I said, starting with the lower reps at heavier weight at the slower tempo, uh, then moving on to a slightly lighter weight, slightly higher reps at a medium tempo. So if, let's say four zero one zero on the first week, let's say three zero one zero on the second week, and that that final week reducing the tempo down to two two zero one zero, so two second eccentrics. The reps go right up. We add in some drop sets. Um, again, it's 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 high volume. Uh, being uh, careful about our exercise selection uh, and in that more kind of classic bodybuilding split of uh, different muscle groups on different mm -hmm. days. Um, so that's a, that's a, that's a great, uh, probably one of my favorite just kind of like pure bodybuilding uh, protocols that makes a ton of sense from a scientific point of view, but also um, it's engaging, mentally engaging, um, and allows you, if you do have access to this kind of equipment, allows you to kind of use everything in a very purposeful way no i couldn't agree more as you know someone who can relate say oh if i gotta go to the gym i gotta be on a level of torturing myself to say did i go in there and put myself through just a grueling kind of workout but you know from the way you describe it like you said scientifically working fluidly the entire muscle not just going to going through all the muscle fibers that you're going to be exercising to getting you know, the fast twitch the slow twitch like it's just it not only makes more sense but it just I mean, even for someone who's not going for a crazy high trophy, you know, cycle, this is just a better way to right. go through the system itself. And it's not no? that it's not, I mean, still a lot of volume, obviously, but it is, you don't feel like you're kind of grinding yourself into the ground. It all feels very anabolic. It all feels very, you know, it all feels like it's doing a lot of good and that you're truly, you know, because you are obviously being very aware of uh, the tension in the muscle you're being very aware of movement patterns. You're being very aware of um, insertions and origin points because you're, you're trying to create as much tension in that specific muscle as you can. So you're really thinking about the movement, mm -hmm. um, especially you know, when you're in that slower tempo, there's a, there's a long eccentric there to really think about the muscle lengthening and that kind of thing. So it's a very, you know, it's a very aware protocol. It's not just about like going as hard as you can. It's a very thoughtful, you know, what muscle am I re really trying to activate here and then feeling that muscle work through the full range of motion for you know uh, as you as you work through this this kind of three week progression. Um, no, I love that. That's yeah, it, it's, like it's, you it's, said. It's, I don't want to work out as much anymore. But like if I'm doing something that is, as people would say in this part of town, intentional as well. Right. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. But it is very intentional. Yeah. It is very intentional. It's very purposeful. Very intentional. Very well thought out. Like I said, very very good from a scientific uh, point of view. Uh, very good from a, a mental point of view and um, it kind of satisfi satisfies that kind of need for you know you're not just coming in and doing three sets of 10 every time like you have a, a very organized progression you have that progressive overload um, but you're bringing in a lot of different elements like you're bringing in the tempo you're bringing in rest periods you're bringing in you know exercise selection you're bringing in uh, different rep schemes um, so it's, it's, it's that there's a lot to it um, and, I, and I find it really, really effective for, for a lot of people who are, you know, trying to achieve hypertrophy, trying to look better naked, um, <laughs> which is a lot of people. Um, In the and, end, and just, it is. But just generally just wanting to be all round like fitter and stronger. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great method and, you know, I like it a lot and I, I use it a lot. And how, um, about, how long are the cycles do you prescribe? Well, three, week, three week cycles to take you through, like I said, the, the heavy, medium and light. Um, and then, you know, you can just go back to the, to the original cycle. I mean, you can, you could cycle this kind of stuff forever. I mean, typically here at Faros, obviously we'll do a cycle of that and then we'll move to another protocol and then maybe three weeks later, we'll go back to it kind of thing. Um, that way I, I like to keep like challenging people's minds as well as their bodies and keep asking new questions of them. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to keep, you know, um, forcing new ad adaptation, forcing new stress, um, keeps people on their toes and keeps them keeps their bodies changing so we'll usually just do it for three weeks then we'll change to another protocol and then we'll we'll come back to it but usually you know over the course of a year we'll, we'll cycle through this maybe three or four times sweet and um, mixing in the other stuff as well um obviously when we do the, the the class format you know i'm being very aware of you know what we have access to in terms of like you know we can't use machine stuff when we're doing classes obviously so it's it's very selected dumbbell barbell mm -hmm. um, exercises uh, and often it will be um integrated into a protocol but not the whole protocol won't just be that there'll be other stuff as well um 
Next one. Um, another one of my favorites uh, is the Geronda 8x8 method. Um, I've mentioned this before in podcasts. Um, this method um, created by Vince Geronda, who was, um, you know, at one point in time, kind of before the Arnold generation of lifters, was, you know, one of the most famous uh, bodybuilders in the world. Um, certainly one of the best trainers in the world. Um, and he kind of invented this uh, eight by eight method. Uh, the eight by eight method is essentially just eight sets of eight reps with 30 seconds rest. So the rest is short. The weight is kind of medium. Um, you're kind of be doing, you know, a, a, maybe a 12 rep max uh, kind of weight, but you're only, you're only doing eight reps, um, but you're repeating that uh, for eight rounds with only 30 seconds rest. So it feels kind of like cardio and it's kind of that nice hybrid between, you know, uh, bodybuilding and cardiovascular work mm -hmm. so your heart rate will jack up because the rest period is so so short and um, often we will start this again with our with our big compound movements with, with our squat and our bench and um and so forth uh, and we'll add in maybe isolation stuff a, a little later on but i found this over the years to be a, a very uh, very effective method very, very doable in, in the class format very simple um you can maybe work through you know three to six uh, exercises per session in this in this way with the eight by eight method again you could do this actually with uh, like a classic bodybuilding split kind of thing so you could do this like chest one day back another or you could do kind of like an all body workout with this method you know i could do literally deadlift squats and bench on the same day with this method and and, and you know be fine with it um in terms of obviously like metabolic work like you get you're gonna get uh you're gonna burn more energy uh with the big compound movements so it's obviously doing eight by eight with 30 second rest on back squats is a lot harder than on uh, bicep curls uh metabolically but that's not to say that the eight by eight bicep curls isn't super effective because it is the muscle will get a lot of work done in a very short amount of time that's the other great thing it's a very efficient method you get a lot of work done in a very short amount of time which is very useful for us in the in the class format um it's obviously a very uh, very anabolic workout in that um that the short rest periods have been shown to to stimulate growth hormone um that was something he was big on he was very anti steroids uh but very pro like how do we how do we release these hormones naturally so uh, short short rests um and um hard work <laughs> like just good old fashioned you know grunt work um, this is a, this is a hard method. It's a very challenging method, but, uh, I've, again, I found it to be super effective over the, over the years and works great in, you know, a, a gym like Pharos or, a, a, like a CrossFit style gym. You can, you can do it because you don't need a lot of equipment. Um, you know, he was doing it at a time when there wasn't a lot of equipment, mm -hmm. you know, in the fifties and so forth. So, um, and he was in great shape. If you Google, if you put in Vince Geronda on Google and look at his physique. He was in, he was in great shape. Um, so he was getting great results with this method a long time ago before, you know, before the invention of the, a lot of the machines and a lot of the kind of drugs that you see uh, mm -hmm. around today. So um, obviously he was also a very, a very big proponent of, of good nutrition. I think he famously was saying like, this really is 80% nutrition and 20% 20, 20 training. Um, so, um, yeah, again, it's it's always really interesting when you kind of find find those older lifters and you kind of people say, you know, well, you need this and well, you need that. And it's like, well, these guys were doing it at a time and all of that stuff didn't even exist. Mm -hmm. And we're very, very, very good at it. So, <laughs> you know, that 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 kind of statement about like uh, modern modern methods and modern drugs and modern machines and all that kind of stuff kind of does not compute when you consider what these guys are doing. No, completely. You know, like, I, I wrote it down as soon as you said that eight by eight with 30 seconds off. I mean, that's just great volume in or efficiency yeah. in that kind of time frame. Yeah, and it's super effective. Like with that thing with the people in the past, like, yeah, that's where it comes down to this a lifestyle. Yeah, Google it's, Vince Geronda now on your computer. <laughs> How do you spell his last name? G I R G I R O N D A. It's, and then go to images. That guy's pretty, pretty, pretty yoked, ripped, right? Yeah. <laughs> Like that classic kind of like tiny hips, big shoulders, big chest. And he like, had this back in the day. Back in the day. 
Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty impressive when you look at lifestyle. You're gonna go and you're gonna make sure you put in your body. You're going to put an hour or two a day in the gym doing stuff. You know, it's, well, it's, it's going to make sense. And also, you remember back then, like they were just eating a lot of real food. Like he was eating a ton of eggs, like a ton of meat, like veggies, but he wasn't eating anything like man-made like we have now. He just did, it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't putting all that shit in his body. He wasn't eating like keto bars. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Nothing against keto bars, but, you know, kind of. Um, okay, guys, let's move on to the next one. Keto bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, German volume training, uh, GBT. Um, obviously, I've talked about this a lot before. We do, we've done it a lot over the years. I've done it a ton over the years. Um, kind of made famous by Charles Poliquin. Um, oh, great, great guy. Yeah, we talked about him a lot yeah. as well. And um, yeah, German volume training is a 10 by 10 method with a one minute rest. Now I know that kind of sounds somewhat familiar to the Gironda method, right? It isn't, it isn't dissimilar. Um, obviously it's 10 sets of 10, one minute rest, um, which again, if you're doing that on big compound movements, gets pretty brutal pretty quickly. 10 back squats, if you're doing it a, a decent weight for 10 rounds with one minute rest, you can get gnarly. Um, when I've done this in the past, you know, people have complained a lot <laughs> about muscle soreness. This will leave you uh, very sore. Um, but again, it is a super effective method. Um, again, I usually only cycle this for uh, for three weeks. Um, I think, you know, standard protocol is kind of three to six weeks. I find mentally a six-week protocol is just too much. I find people will just like start to just not want to come in. Um, <laughs> so I find three weeks to be plenty. Um, again, it works best with the big compound lifts. Mm -hmm. um, although you can you can do it on leg extensions and legs curls, uh, you know stuff like that. Uh, it will it'll still be effective. But um, in terms of bang for your buck, it's it's super effective on those big compound movements. Um, again, a, a nice kind of mix of, of hypertrophy and strength. Obviously, it's gonna it's gonna be more on the hypertrophy side as, as opposed to pure strength. But you know, a man that can squat two twenty five. 10 by 10 with one minute rest the strong dude so strong you know i, I think there's often the the, the the misconception that uh, things are either strength or hypertrophy and you have to remember it's, it's it's not the case like it's a it's a sliding scale um it's just a bias you can bias towards strength or you can bias towards hypertrophy i know a ton of guys um who only ever do bodybuilding type splits um they don't really do like pure strength work, like no, like uh, one rep maxes or three rep maxes, stuff like that. And they are fucking stronger than me. And I do a ton of that stuff. So <laughs> you can't, you can't, um, you know, you can't think of it in terms of two very different things. Um, of course, there is a reason why we do pure strength work, just as there are re there's a reason why we do hypertrophy work. And they are, you know, it is an emphasis and, you know, if we want to get, if we truly want to get stronger, uh, then, we are right now then chances are we are gonna put in some 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 more pure strength work but you know again don't don't separate them as, as two very different things um how many exercises are you getting a day for um or just protocols you're doing a day for the um let's say you're going with the the polykin the 10 by 10 yeah like are you doing four exercises that way or just one probably not really um I find it's different whether it's leg day or upper body day. So often you'll just do like, I'll do a primary with accessory. So let's say, let's say it's, it's squat day. I'll just do 10 by 10 on back squats. And then for the accessory work, I'll do like four sets of 12 on leg extensions, four sets of 12 on leg curl. And that's where going that to the machines kind of after yeah. you're doing that. Yeah. One. Gotcha. Yeah. Because usually you're so, you're so blown out with, uh, from the 10 by 10 back squats. You, you can't do anything else. Now you probably could do like a 10 by 10 leg extension or something like that. But mm. now on upper body day, because it's less metabolically demanding, I, I find that you can do supersets. So you could do a bench press with a pull up, for example, you could do 10, 10 bench press, 10 pull up, one minute rest for 10 rounds. 10 by 10 pull ups. That's, that's good. Yeah. But you, you could, you could do it or you could do lat pull down, whatever. Um, just because it, it, it's less taxing than obviously squat day. I find you can get away with that, but usually I would select my, I would select my compound movements 
and I would do them first under the the ten by ten method, mm -hmm. and then I uh, for my accessory work I I drop the sets down to like is that a four by twelve four by eight to twelve kind of protocol, um, that kind of thing. I, I've also done it obviously more in a you know in a in a, a circuit training like CrossFit type uh, class where it's more of a um, you know you do the ten by ten first and then you do a Metcon like something like that. Mm -hmm. It just depends what you're what you're working on at that time, but. Um, yeah, you're certainly not going to want to do 10 by 10 back squats followed by 10 by 10 deadlift followed by 10 by like it's just it just gets too much so the body can only handle so much before you you get to the point where you're doing more harm than good and just just you know i mean yourself. 25 year old me would say oh yeah great let's accept it go for it we can do this yeah now it's like yeah, yeah. i don't need to do that yeah yeah. And obviously, again, you can you can play with tempo on, on German volume training. Right? You know, you can do four second eccentrics and um, you want to make it really bad for yourself. You can do four <laughs> second eccentrics and you know, four second, three second, two second. You can you can play with those. Uh, now you're getting creative tempos. But yeah, obviously, the the higher the, the higher the tempo, the slower the tempo, the the rougher it's going to be on your central nervous. And do you system. have some people who come in here and still look for that? Like, oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens you know, this year when we can reopen again property and uh, property properly and see how many, uh, you know, see how many people are still, still have that kind of like CrossFit itch of like, I want to go all in and fucking yeah. kill myself and how many people are like, eh, I'm kind of like, you know, it's a difference between like a 20 something gym and a 30 to 40 something. I mean, we, we are more of a 30 to 40 something gym really. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we have a lot of kind of like, ex crossfitters or people that are kind of like ah you know i don't need to fucking <laughs> kill myself in quite the same way as i used to maybe i'll just like pull back a little bit i um, love that that's what i love about this gym it's like oh yeah i don't see that yeah, younger no. crowd people yeah. throwing stuff it's, this is great it's you know nice. we have our moments when we still like get after a bit but you oh, know, saturday morning for just, sure yeah. sunday morning yeah it's just not the same like every day has got to be a grind kind of thing i just you know mentally it just gets too much after a while um, so that is German volume training, the 10 by 10 method, one minute rest, um, super effective, great, hyper, great for hypertrophy. I would say great for general strength uh, and great, obviously, for mental training. It's hard. It's effective. Um, and again, it's efficient. You get a lot of work done in a short amount of time. Uh, next one is um, still my boy, Charles Poliquin. Um, <laughs> uh, 6, 12, 24 method. Um, I love this method, similar to the reason why I love the Y3T method. The Y3T where it, where it separates the fibers, like uh, like I said, week one, you're working those slow twitch fibers. Week two, your medium twitch fibers. And then week three, your slow twitch fibers. The 6-12-24 protocol kind of, put that, kind of puts that all into one workout. So the six obviously is going to be the, the bigger compound, uh, heavier weight, lower rep movement. The 12 is going to be more of a hypertrophy, traditional hypertrophy range, a medium weight, um, obviously slightly lighter, um, slightly more lactic burn on the 12. And then the 24 is going to be a light uh, uh, strength endurance um, kind of exercise. Um, again, very, very effective, very efficient, uh, good for like all around metabolic work. It will get your heart rate up. You'll get a lot of things covered. And it also allows for a lot of different movement patterns, obviously. Because I can do like, maybe I do, let's say I do six back squat, 12 dumbbell reverse lunge, and 24 jump squats at body weight, that kind of stuff. Like I can get a lot of different exercises in, um, in one session. I can cover a lot of bases, get a lot of work done hit a ton of different muscle fibers um, and have a good all-round workout that'll get me fit. Again, because the heart rate's going to be elevated. It's going to do some some um, some heart work. Um, and, you know, just a good, um, it feels like a good sweaty kind of like workout that, that that's, it's not, it's a very, again, very science-based type workout, very well organized, very well structured. It isn't just a bunch of stuff. Um, but it feels like you're doing a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So that's that's another one I love. And again, you're going to get that that kind of trifecta of um, strength, hypertrophy, and, and endurance. Um, it just puts it all in one session as opposed to, you know, breaking it up into three weeks. But um, neither is better than the other. You know, again, I like, we like to mix it up here. So, 
Now, this is a good, another good three-week cycle of 6, 12, 24. Um, it's also good as a finisher. Like sometimes we'll throw this in as a finisher, 6, 12, 24. That's a good one, yeah. Um, but like I said, it, for, 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 it covers a lot of bases, uh, gets a lot of work done, and uh, people, people here love that protocol. It, it, it's, it's kind of a, a people's favorite. Um, very, very kind of versatile. And again, you don't need a lot of equipment to do it. Like I said, you can do that with a barbell, a pair of dumbbells and body weight. Like you can get a lot of, a lot of work done with that protocol. So uh, 6, 12, 24. Like a lot, usually you would do, you know, three to four sets of 6, 12, 24. So you do 6, 12, 12, 24, rest for two minutes, go again, rest for two minutes, go again, maybe rest for two minutes, go again. Um, and I'll usually do, I might do, you know, two monster sets of that. So I might do 6, 12, 24 on, on three movements and then take a break and then do three more movements. So you're getting six exercises covered with you know built-in rest in in one session so again you're, you're you're hitting a lot of different muscle groups hitting a lot of different angles uh, hitting a lot of, a lot of different fibers uh, and getting a lot of work done in a, in a relatively short amount of time so another one that's well worth considering that that's a great one for like you know i'm in a gym in you know i'm on holiday somewhere i mm -hmm. found a gym what should i do today oh, let me just do a 6 12 24 because it's going to get a lot of work done it's going to be easier to organize and you know it's just a good one to throw in there Okay, last one, um, IWTs, interval weight training. I think we've talked about this a bunch before. Um, I love this protocol. This is a great, uh, what we call a GPP protocol. This is great for um, conditioning, uh, weightlifting, um, and just a session that gives you a lot of bang for your buck, like a good strength and conditioning session. Mm -hmm. Um, originally, it was devised by Pat O'Shea uh, in his book, Quantum Strength and Power Training. I think it came out in the late 70s, maybe the 80s, early 80s. Um, he devised it for his weightlifters to increase their GPP. And it basically combines, um, you know, weightlifting movements. So maybe power cleans, power snatches, that kind of thing uh, with cardiovascular effort. Um, and also squat protocols with cardiovascular effort. So for example, let's say um, I'm doing uh, cleans and back squats, for example. I might do 10 power cleans followed by a two minute row, uh, trying to hit a certain number on that two minute row. Mm -hmm. uh, two minute rest for three rounds. So I've done power cleans and rowing. Then maybe I switch to back squats. So I gotta do my back squats, 10 back squats, plus two minute run for max distance, two minute rest, three rounds, okay? So I'm covering uh, lifts and I'm cut covering cardiovascular output. Now what Pat O'Shea found is that the performance of his lifters went up because they were, they were just trying to be better weightlifters, they weren't trying to be anything else. But he found that by increasing their GPP in this kind of functional way, he found they could, um, you know, they, he found that they increased their overall performance in weightlifting. Um, so again, this has been this method's been kind of like bastardized over the years a little bit, uh, and we've kind of thrown in some 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 different stuff with it. But originally it was you know ten and then two minutes is the traditional format. So ten reps of something followed by two man, two minutes of something with two minute rest, uh, and traditionally it was a power movement followed by a squat movement. Now we've changed that a little bit over the years. So let's say you wanted to emphasize like um, kind of. Um, pure strength or kind of raw power. Um, you're going to bring those reps down. You're going to increase the weight of the lift. So maybe it's just five or three power cleans and then maybe just one minute on the rower. Or uh, with the squat, you drop the squats down to three or five reps and then one minute, you know, one minute sprint, whatever it is. Um, so you can kind of manipulate it to what you're trying to work on uh, on that particular day. You could do the same thing with endurance. So maybe the uh, the, the strength movement moves up to an, more of an endurance rep range because like 15 to 25, uh, maybe you're just doing like goblet squats or something like that, um, or you're doing um, kettlebell swings or something like that. Um, and then the, the run on the other end will get a little bit longer. So maybe now it's a, a three or a four minute uh, uh, cardiovascular effort. Um, the interesting thing is you know, if you take the if you take that protocol, like if you take ten power cleans, followed by a two minute row with a two minute rest, what happens if you take the rest out and you just do three rounds of ten power cleans with a let's say a four hundred meter run? Mm -hmm. What do you get? 
In terms of the math or? Now you get CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what it was. Like, you know, I don't know whether, you know, CrossFit looked at that method and like, just thought, well, if we just take out the rest period, this makes it more interesting. But essentially that's that's what it does it combines you know weightlifting with cardiovascular effort now much like crossfit does uh minus probably the 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 gymnastic type work um but again a, a super effective super efficient way to combine uh, you know weight training with cardiovascular effort which gives people a better uh, better level of gpp which most people in the general you know community um, are looking to improve their gpp they're looking to get healthier they're looking to get fitter um, and they're looking to get like stronger at the same time. So this is a great one to throw in there. Now, this isn't something you do every day. Um, I would probably never prescribe IWT more than twice a week, usually only once a week because it is God awful. Mm -hmm. um, if you do, let's say you do 10 power cleans at 225, followed by a, a, a two a minute effort on a cardiovascular device. And that effort, by the way, should be around 90% of your max effort with only a two minute rest. If you do that uh, for three rounds and then you do the same thing with squats for three rounds, it is God oh, awful. I'm and the reason I'm is- Sick just thinking about that. Yeah, when, you, when you're operating at 90%, um, so let's say in an extreme example, you might get 600 meters in the rower in two minutes. You know, the difference between doing 600 meters in two minutes and 400 meters in two minutes is huge. The feeling that you get after you get off the rower, after after rowing for 600 meters, it, you know, it's, it's horrible. And you only have two minutes to recover, and then you got to do it all over again. You know, you repeat that six times, it's a lot of central nervous system stress. It's a lot of heart rate work. It's a lot of muscular work. It's just all around horrible. Mm -hmm. You feel pretty pretty devastated after. Now, you know, so, so to say to anybody, you're going to do this more than twice a week would be particularly cruel uh, and you'll probably give someone some, some psychological and physical damage so uh, we've done this um, you know we've done this a lot at Pharos um, and I know a lot of other gyms have uh, and usually it, it is employed you know once a week um, and it's often a nice way to add in some more conditioning um, and getting getting away from you know just just kind of lifting 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 and this, this adds in a nice conditioning element uh, but again in a very kind of scientific and um sensible way um that can be very tracked very traceable um very easy to kind of like both teach and um uh, and follow and improve on um you know maybe maybe week one you're hitting 500 meters every two uh, every two minutes maybe week two you're hitting 550 maybe week three you're hitting 600 you know you're probably not getting that much better that quickly, but you know, just for the for the sake of uh, for the sake of argument, the idea is that you make progression uh, with the protocol, as as with all these protocols, um, and that's an important point to make. You know, the point of all these protocols, the point of having these three week cycles, is always progressive overload. You're always trying to add progressive overload to your cycles to 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 to, to stress the body, to challenge the body, to know that you're either getting stronger or you're increasing muscle tissue or you're increasing your your overall general fitness um so all of these protocols kind of follow that so iwt pat o'shea interval weight training combining uh, weightlifting movements and strength movements with cardiovascular effort again uh, simple very effective and very kind of easy to program very teachable in a class environment which is another reason i like it um again like i said it's been kind of like bastardized over the years kind of toyed with it a little bit so you know for often we'll, we'll sub out the barbell work for dumbbell work or mm -hmm. kettlebell work um but uh, you know we found it to be a very very very, very reliable very effective uh, method over the years so when it still yeah, comes to the it. layman it's my question for you and yeah. someone's you know we all still kind of want to be told what to do like oh here's the yeah. workout it's kind of listed for us the person who knows way more than me, but you know, someone who doesn't have access to the, who only has access to the gym, they either don't get a trainer or they're just coming into training and they're trying to put these things, uh, these training methods together for other people. I mean, what, for them to be an instructor or to learn or to actually put them together for themselves, how do you emphasize like, or advise they go about doing that in terms of the structuring on picking those workouts they are gonna pair well together as well as, um, yeah. Right. The, 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 there's two kinds kind of answers. One, one is education. Like, make sure you mm -hmm. you research and you you understand all these protocols and what they are. And the second one is experiment on yourself. <laughs> know how they feel. 
because like I was just saying with the IWT, you have to know how it feels to be able to prescribe it successfully. Because if you were to go in and say, oh, we're going to do this IWT and we're going to do it three days a week without having experienced it, you know, it would be a very a unfair thing to do to people. <laughs> um, only once you do it, you truly know, okay, this this put me out for two days. This this caused me a lot of stress. I can't ask this of people three times a week. It's yeah. just, you know. Personal training empathy. Yeah, you you have to you you know you have to have, to at a certain point you have to walk the walk to really understand it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, research. Not make sure you understand what you're doing and why what the purpose of it is. Um, I find that teaching becomes a lot easier once you 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 a understand the purpose and b can convey that purpose to your audience, um, and then c you have to have experienced what it felt like to do. Um, I, I think with all these workouts that that's true. You have to experience. You know what something feels like um otherwise when you're programming you, you know you take things for granted oh they're just going to do this and then they're just going to do that well once you do it once you do 10 by 10 back squat at 225 with one minute rest with a 4010 tempo and you know how god awful that is like you'll know when when and when not to program it mm -hmm. and who it should be programmed for you know um i think most of the most of the programs we've talked about today um well some of them like Y three two, you could pretty much Y three T, you could pro pretty much do with um, anybody if you were very careful with the exercise selection. Um, I said that, that's not even true. Like beginners, if you if you're a beginner, 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 um, you're going to start with some, or you should be starting with some very very basic protocols. You should should be should be starting with some very simple strength movements some simple um you know dumbbell what we call anatomical adaptation type programming just getting the body used to ranges of motion you know it probably would only be like classic kind of like three sets of 10 type protocols because the body simply isn't ready for the, these these um these more complicated protocols pretty much everything we've been through today is going to be kind of like more suitable for the medium medium level gym goer mm -hmm. medium to experienced um i mean this is why so at faris we have this program called launch now launch is kind of like um an introduction into the other programs because most people if we were to throw them into like everything we normally do it, it can just be too too much too much for the the person too much volume too much stress um, too much to try and learn too much to try and take in in one go um a lot of times people's people's central nervous system has not yet woken up uh, and they they quite simply cannot perform the movements that are asked and they can't they can't follow you know basic instruction of how to do a squat or how to do a deadlift or how to hinge properly um it's not because they're not listening it's because their bodies just will not respond to what their brains are telling them because they just haven't learned that 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 skill yet their motor units are not not switched on enough to perform the perform the movement correctly so you know i think everyone needs to go through that that anatomical adaptation period um, and for some people it's quick and for some people it's slightly longer uh, and some people some people kind of stay in that phase for a long time but um you know w with all these other protocols that like once you have got a little bit of experience under your belt um you, you should be able to start um introducing them um you know it may be a while before you get to german volume training uh it may be a while before you get to um iwts um you know, you can you can always kind of like manipulate these a little bit so it makes it more doable for the for the the, the early trainee or the the beginner. But um, yeah, some, certainly something to be very aware of. Uh, like I said, experience will help you with that. Like if you know how it feels, you should know who it's for. Um, and yeah, it, and it's also like uh, putting round pegs in round holes. Um, like I said, the Y three T is more of a like a bodybuilding type protocol. The uh, the IWT is more of a GPP type protocol. Um, so it's really understanding, you know, what protocol you're going to use for what demographic and what the, what the purpose of that is and what the, what the effect of that is. And, um, yeah, just, just using these things at the right time. And like I said, we, we find here that, that, that these kind of three week cycles, um, are a very effective way of doing that uh, and often we'll obviously we'll put in deload weeks so it's not like you're going to do Gironda eight by eight for three weeks and then go straight into german volume training you know <laughs> because 
the body needs to take a break. So often we'll do um, a cycle of three weeks, we'll take a week deload and then we'll get back on another three week cycle. But everything has to fit together. It can't just be like, you know, a bunch of stuff. And I've, um, you know, I've talked about this in podcasts before. If you're, if you're going to, uh, if you're going to a facility, you're going in and every day just feels like a bunch of stuff that doesn't really make much sense, but it's like, it's fun and you got hot and you got sweaty and you left and thought, oh, I had a great workout, but it didn't really, if, if one day to the next, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. You know, you need to ask some questions like, what is this really doing for me long term? Um, things need to fit together. Things need to be planned. Um, things need to have progressive overload. Um, you should be aware of what you're doing. Everything you're doing should have purpose. And, um, you know, if, if it doesn't, then it's fine for a while. But trust me, you will A, stop getting results, B, get very bored, and C, probably get hurt. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's time to really be aware, you know, of what you're doing and why when you go to the gym. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope that's helpful for you guys. Um, they are my all-time top five. Um, as I said, there are probably three more or four more or five more that I could have thrown in there. Uh, but there, there are five really good protocols there. I'm just going to go over them one more time to you guys. You can either Google them or, you know, look them up if you if you if you want to give them a try. Um, Y3T was the first one, which is Neil Hill's uh, bodybuilding protocol. Uh, Geronda, Vince Geronda's eight by eight method. It's eight by eight with 30 seconds rest. Super effective. Great, great hypertrophy uh, workout. Great strength. Like like I said, it does have that conditioning element to it because it has such a short rest period. Uh, German volume training. Um, again, uh, Poliquin made it famous. 10 by 10, one minute rest. Um, a great hypertrophy, a uh, great general strength program. Uh, 6, 12, 24. Um, again, uh, a Poliquin protocol kind of blends strength hypertrophy and strength endurance in a single workout. And then we finished with the uh, Pat O'Shea uh, IWT variations. Um, great for GPP, great for in, uh, uh, increasing the general fitness of your athlete whilst including uh, strength and power lifts. Uh, a lot of bang for your buck in that workout, particularly hard, but again, very effective um, and a great one to to know, to prescribe, to get under your belt and to, uh, and to use from time to time. So I hope that's been helpful for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, um, uh, always feel free to, uh, to reach out to us um, either on our Instagram page, on the podcast, mm -hmm. or uh, email us info at ferrisathleticclub.com. Uh, and that's it, guys. Until next time, take care. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Brennan, for joining me again. No, no problems. Great job. And uh, hopefully we wake up tomorrow and uh, the cycle is broken. <laughs> Break the ice. The Groundhog Day ice around our minds. <laughs> All right, guys, you take care. See you soon. All right. Bye.